I'm going to show you how I address a problem which is not uncommon with the Raptor and Raptor Reloaded, and possibly even the Phoenix designed hands. Once they've been strung up, there can be problems with excessive friction in parts of the finger mechanism, which means that they don't operate cleanly. Here's an example of a Raptor Reloaded that I've just finished stringing up, and although it looks clean, in reality, when I try and operate it, you'll find that the proximals don't all bend down as you would like, including the thumb. And although quick operation will make it look as though it's working reasonably well, this isn't really a, a good, fair and accurate test of the mechanism. A slow closing of the hand will show that it really isn't operating very cleanly. This is going to need some attention. So what I'm going to do is take a look particularly at the knuckle joints. The finger joints are working pretty cleanly. I'm not too worried about them. It's the knuckle joints that I've got concerns over. And particularly what I'll be looking at is the gap here at the very top of the curved section of the proximal where it dips under that part of the palm. And you'll notice here that there is almost no gap, which means that there's an opportunity for excessive friction. And this is particularly uh, troublesome where you've tested the hand before you've strung it up, before there's any elastic or fishing line on it, and you've dangled the hand and all of the fingers and thumb dangled and flexed in an almost frictionless manner, and therefore you thought that everything was clear to go ahead and put the elastic on. In reality, because of a certain amount of uh, uh, slop in the finger, or the, particularly the knuckle pin joints, you'll find that the uh, finger, when it is under tension from the elastic, and particularly the tendon as well, will be pulled very slightly back into the palm and that will exacerbate any form of friction that you've got at this point. The long and the short is I'm going to have to take this thing apart. Now on the Raptor and Raptor Reloaded um, there are different approaches. In fact um, on the Raptor you'll find that the knuckle pin sticks out a little bit and you can go ahead and grab it with a pair of pliers. Go for flat-ended pliers with serrations on the uh, inside there to get a good grip on it and pull it out. On the Raptor Reloaded and Phoenix hands you'll notice that there is this rectangular hole in the middle between the second and third fingers. That means that the end of the knuckle pins are visible. Now that's for a very good reason. That's your ability to get in with a suitable tool like a flat bladed screwdriver and push the uh, pins out. Now I'm going to start with taking this pin out. I'm not happy with the way that proximal in the knuckle is bending. So I'm going to begin by taking this one out. I'm going to go in and leverage that pin and push. See, just with a little push here, I've managed to push it out enough to be able to get the pliers on. I'll grab it, and there we go, it's out. Right, at this point, unfortunately, I'm going to need to cut the elastic off. I'm going to see whether I can get away without taking the tendon line off, but I'm going to cut off the elastic. I'll cut it off from the end here because that was a beautifully tied and sealed knot. The elastic here can then be cut off. At this point, be very careful. You'll notice that you've got the tendon line underneath and the elastic on the top. Be careful you don't cut the tendon by mistake. Okay, there we go. And that's the elastic removed. So, there's two things I want to pay attention to here. One of them is the roof of the joint here. You'll notice here, when it's printed, there's a tendency for the filament to sag as it goes across this bridged area. 
So that is an area that can cause problems as it rubs against the proximal. I'm going to use a very small flat file and rub down that section. Again, being very careful that I don't catch that tendon by mistake. Okay, so that's taken a little bit of the excess plastic out of that part of the joint. That's not the end of the story though. The other part is the other part of the mating um, surface here, and that's the curved end of the proximal. This can become very ragged on occasions, depending on the quality of the print, and it can do with a little bit of attention. I'm going to use a slightly larger file here, and holding very carefully again, making sure that I don't nip that uh, tendon by mistake, I'm going to do some more rubbing down here. Particularly paying attention to the top, because that is where it can rub on the palm, making sure that I stay square to the proximal itself, so that I don't end up with it lopsided. Okay, and at this point, you'll see that there's extra uh, filament that is now hanging over the edge as a result of the filing. I'm going to take a utility knife and very carefully scrape off that extra plastic. You could use another file to do that. There is no right and wrong approach. Okay, we've got as much of that off as we can. Don't want any extra flash laying around in the joint. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. Bumps have been rubbed off. And at this point, um, it could go back in again. I'm going to do the same thing on this other finger that's next to it. Remember, a file only cuts on the forward stroke. There's no point in pulling it back, it's cutting on the forward stroke. Okay, time to put it back together again and we'll see whether it uh, has improved the situation. So, I'll start off with the end finger as usual. Don't worry about the, uh, the inside finger until you've got the, uh, the pin uh, in. So here's the pin. By the way, I added an extra bit of chamfering on the end of the pin by filing it down a little bit to begin with. I'm going to repeat that right now, just to make it a little easier to get in. It can also help on occasions with a hacksaw to cut and extend that slot or just to make it a little wider. It doesn't need to be any longer, but just make it a little wider. It just makes it easier to get it in. That goes in. And then the next finger, it's time to put that in, making sure that these tendons don't get in the way, don't get trapped. And again, I'm going to push that one in. That one's gone all the way in, no extra force needed this time. So there, I mean, it seems to be free, but the uh, proof of the pudding here is going to be to put the elastic on and see whether or not it actually works once the elastic is on. That's the next step.
Okay, I have reattached the uh, elastic. These knots will need to be sealed with super glue or CA glue uh, before uh, um, the whole job is finished. But at this point, in assessing the effectiveness, that finger is now working, as far as I'm concerned, perfectly. The one next to it isn't absolutely going as well as it might, but hopefully with a little bit of uh, use it will be adequate. But certainly I've improved the effectiveness of the joint, reduced the friction, got rid of any uh, fouling that was happening in that joint, and that has uh, freed up the fingers to operate as they were designed to do so. And that is a hand that's going to be used for demo purposes at a local library, hence the library logo.